Live from San Francisco, California, it's The Cube at VMworld 2014. Brought to you by VMware, Cisco, EMC, HP, and Nutanix. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in San Francisco for VMworld 2014. This is theCUBE, I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Rod Matthews, GM of storage at Barracuda Networks. Uh, one of the most successful startup stories in Silicon Valley, self-funded by the entrepreneurs, and then obviously follow-on finance and then gone public. Uh, BJ Jenkins is now the CEO. Uh, mm -hmm. Welcome to theCUBE. Great. John, nice to be here. Uh, I have a little uh, spot in my heart for Barracuda because being an entrepreneur, you know, everyone yeah. just gets a big round of funding and they get all this gas and they build a rocket ship, sometimes that blows up. Mm -hmm. But the founders of Barracuda really built this thing from scratch, self-funded it, mm -hmm. built it up to be huge, um, back in the firewall days. Yep. And now, put posters all over the airports, became a brand name, mm -hmm. now state of the art in the enterprise, um, and just a great success story. But now storage is into the, into the equation because infrastructure is not just boxes now, it's the cloud, right. everything else. Right. What's going on at Barracuda? Tell us what's happening. Yeah, so we're excited, experiencing some really great growth in our storage business. Uh, the Barracuda brand, the Barracuda business model, the large Barracuda customer base um, has all been a great catalyst uh, for that business. Uh, we started off about six or seven years doing message archiving. Um, essentially is our first entry into storage. And that really came out of our spam of virus firewall business. It was an adjacent use case that, that made a lot of sense. Uh, we very shortly thereafter uh, went into backup, uh, moved into that space about five years ago. And then recently we've moved into the e-signing and um, online file sync and share space. So, so variety of products. So Barracuda's always had this ethos of making it simple, a lot yep. of open source. Uh, making things like an appliance, like a toaster. What is the storage strategy? We heard from uh, uh, Paul uh, Long, entrepreneur, people yep. are doing things a little bit weird and different that are, that are compelling um, with data. Yep. What are you guys doing different? How are you guys innovating? Yeah, the thing that makes us really different is the fact that we're a cloud-connected company. Everything we do is connected to the cloud, and our storage products were actually built with the cloud in mind. So our backup product, for example, everything is configured uh, from the cloud, um, everything is replicated to the cloud, and the cloud storage is simply an extension of the local box. Um, a lot of our competitors are actually trying to figure out how to take traditional local storage devices and get those connected to the cloud. We started with the cloud, and so that gives our customers a lot of simplicity and allows us to do some very interesting things, like, for example, our live boot technology. Um, for example, the earthquake that just happened this last weekend in Napa, uh, for those customers that may have been backing up with, with Barracuda, if they had a virtualized infrastructure that was backed up into our cloud, with LiveBoot, they can actually fire that right up, right out of the cloud and get their business back up and running without any need to restore the data. Can they get the wine bottles back? I mean, that's what everyone yeah. wants to know, is yeah. <laughs> was the price of wine yeah. going to be increased now? That silver I mean. oak picture made me cry. I don't know if you saw that one. <laughs> I did, yeah. Big pile of wine bottles on the ground. <laughs> yeah. Don't you have to shake them every now and then? Yeah, and, uh, and turn them a little. Them down. <laughs> <laughs> so Rod, I wonder if you could help, help me understand. So the, the markets that you're in are, are kind of diverse, right? There's sort of the email piece, the web piece, the, the firewall, the storage. Do the pieces fit together or are you guys opportunists opportunist that sort of hit new markets as you see them come available? Yeah, the pieces do fit together and the way we put them together is through this cloud managed model that I described earlier. All of our products run on a common platform, all of our products are managed through a common web interface and really what we're doing is we're talking to IT constrained resource professionals that are in companies that typically have between 100 and 5,000 employees where they're not security experts, they're not backup experts, they're not storage experts. They're an IT guy who has to get a job done. And he's got the same problem that the large companies have, but he doesn't have the budget and the specialized skills that the large organizations have. So you kind of looked at what uh, the sort of mid-market generalist guys were doing, and they do a lot of stuff. They're doing security, they're doing yep. web, they're doing email, they're, they're doing storage, and you said, okay, we can provide sets of services for, for those guys. Yep. Uh, yep. Okay, and, and so, um, so talk about the storage piece of that. So that makes sense, that's sort of a good business model. Um, but you were in the business of selling to guys who had storage you know, specialists and yeah. you know, at EMC, at Data Domain. Um, so how, are you guys, how do you guys engage differently? Because th those guys sell into those mid-market accounts. Mm -hmm. How do you, I mean, what do you do? Just lever them out of there or how does that whole <laughs> thing work? Well, the main way we, we engage those customers differently is if you've ever been to an airport, you've seen a Barracuda ad. Sure. If you've ever listened to a radio program, you've probably heard a, a Barracuda ad. Um, sporting events, you see our, our, our logo a lot. 
So one of the things we try to do is create a preference for Barracuda as a brand, and then we really focus on how do we go and, and drive awareness of these various solutions that we, that we offer to these, these end users. And essentially, if we get into a customer with essentially, our, let's say, our mail archiving solution, um, once they're satisfied with that solution, it's very easy to go have a conversation about backup or about a firewall or about an email security system. Uh, that's a very adjacent use case. Yeah, so it's kind of the yep. what else you got yep. to help me kind yep. of thing. Well, so talk, you talked about brand. What, what do you guys want that brand to say? So what we, what we want that brand to say is that, that people should trust us to help them solve their problems. Okay? It's a very trusted company. It's, it's very focused on the mid-market. It's very focused on um, generalist IT folks who really need to solve those problems. And that we will be there for you 24-7. One of the attributes of our business model is our support model, where when you call for support, uh, you get a live person on the phone. We don't have any phone trees. So that problem gets solved immediately. I wonder if you could talk a little bit more about your, your business unit, um, sort of how's it's, how it's made up, what, what's the team look like, and then I want to talk about how I engage. Yeah, so our team is actually um, very unique ins inside Barracuda. It's been formed through organic um, delivery as well as a couple of acquisitions. Um, the core of our storage team is actually based in Ann Arbor, Michigan, right next to the Michigan uh, campus. Um, so we have recruited a lot of people from that, that well, Gene kind of Draco, Midwestern part. Gene, Gene Draco, yeah. He's a Michigan alum. Oop. Here we go, we'll fix this. Earpiece fail yeah. there. Our, um, no. our former CEO uh, was actually a Michigan alum, um, and actually is on the board of the directors uh, for the engineering school at Michigan. And he has a lab out there, I believe, right? It's yep. a little yep. Barracuda lab yep. out in Michigan? Yeah, so we've got a team of about 260 people in Michigan, actually. It's not a shabby yeah. computer science program over no. there, either. Well, no. It's a great no. program. Well, it's Michigan, it's also Eastern Michigan, it's Michigan Tech, it's Michigan State. There's a bunch of great schools right around there. Uh, but fundamentally, that team, is focused on uh, delivering our message archiver and our backup products. We actually just recently on Monday um, acquired a company called C2C Systems based in the UK uh, to help us augment that, that archiving team. So I got to ask you, you've been around the block, EMC, data domain, so the, mm -hmm. data, data, uh, the data business has changed. Mm -hmm. you know, replication, disaster recovery, you mentioned the earthquake. What's changed now? How does cloud make it uh, more compelling or less compelling. What is the drivers right now in the business? Yeah, the main drivers for us in the business is people are looking for ways uh, to protect data and to get that data offsite. It's essentially the same tapes off truck story that, that we've always heard in the marketplace. Um, one of the challenges that we've had at, at companies prior uh, that I've been at uh, was that these smaller companies didn't have a second site. They didn't have an easy way to get that data offsite. And that's where the cloud becomes really important. So that's been a core tenant of our backup product. And you're going to see some announcements from, announcements from us um, over the next month uh, that talk more about the cloud uh, capabilities in our archiver product. All right, so let's talk about a typical use case. So you got a mid-sized company, they may or may not have remote offices, you know, pick, pick whatever scenario you, you choose. What do they have? Um, are, are, do they have sort of existing infrastructure, legacy infrastructure, purpose-built backup appliances, nothing, you know, yeah. tapes? Yeah. Um, talk about that and talk about how you guys sort of bring them on. Yeah, so where, where that usually goes, and I'll use the Round Rock Express as an example. Uh, they play in Austin, um, Texas, they're a minor league baseball team. Um, before we came along and they, and they purchased our backup solution, they were using a hodgepodge of things. They had some backup software from one company, they had storage from another company, uh, they had management tools from a different company. Uh, they were trying to figure out how to get the cloud working, and it just wasn't all gelling for them. So when we showed up with a, with a kind of purpose-built solution, uh, that really solved that problem. It removed a bunch of headaches from them. It was a single, single vendor solution, um, cloud was integrated, really solved their problem. Okay, so they got a bunch of data. Um, those guys probably have it mostly in one place, yeah. I would imagine, right? Yeah. Uh, and then, so how's it work? You sign up for your service, yeah. and uh, what, I swipe a credit card, or I yeah, sign so, an ELA, or? Yeah, we have a, a, a vast majority of our customers um, do very short transactions. Uh, large percentage of our transactions close in seven days or less. So these are customers who come to us with a very strong uh, preference for Barracuda. The other thing we can do very quickly is we have a 30-day no-risk trial of our products. So if you come to us on a Monday and say, I'd like to try your backup product, we can have a box to you on Tuesday. Um, so we get that in very quickly, we, we get that system configured, we get them up and running, uh, and helps remove the need for a proof of concept in a lot of cases. So I, so I, so I install an appliance, which yep. is essentially my on-ramp yep. to your cloud, right? Yep. And it has probably some other local services yep. as well. And then I got I to gotta seed the cloud, right? right? That's the big, right. the big knot hole that I have to get <laughs> right. through, right? And that, that's just going to depend on how much data I have and how yeah. much activity I have, right? Yeah, and, and what happens there is you, you install the, the system, uh, you activate the system with our cloud, so you tell it, hey, I've got this system, we can then go turn on all the entitlements and do all the things that need to happen, and then through our deduplication and kind of WAN optimization technologies that are built into that box, 
uh, we'll get that data up to the cloud as efficiently as possible. Rod, I got to ask yeah. you about the next big wave. Pat Gelsinger was quoted on theCUBE years ago saying, that if you're not out in front of the next big wave of innovation, you become driftwood. Yep. So Barracuda's got an innovative culture. What are you guys doing to get inside of that, in that next wave? What is that next wave and how are you guys going to be out in front of it so you don't become driftwood? Yeah, well I think Pat hit it on, hit on it this morning in his keynote where he talked about the tyranny of the end and the power of the ore. Um, or the, the tyranny of the ore and the power of the end. Mm -hmm. um, you know, essentially what we're doing is we're giving customers choice. And we're saying, hey, if you want to use a local appliance, great, we can do that. If you want to replicate from site to site, great, we can do that. If you want to use the cloud, great, we can do that. And so we're looking at these hybrid solutions that really allow customers to deploy the way they want to deploy. So I think he's right on with that. It's all about, it's all about and. How do I do this and this? So, I think that's, that's the way most IT customers yeah. you know, want to do it. Mm -hmm. So then you got this big whale in the room, it's yeah. Amazon, that says, no, no, yep. you know, do it our way. So, you know, and you, you listen to Andy Jassy talking, you listen to Pat Gelsinger talk, it's like they live mm -hmm. in two different worlds. Yeah. So, <laughs> are, they, are they both right or are they both wrong? <laughs> well, I think, I think customers are going to choose different ways to go mm -hmm. deploy that technology. Uh, some of them are going to choose the Amazon style way, some of them will choose uh, you know, the VMware style way. There's, there's a whole bunch of different choices for what people will do there. Our, our, our approach to that is to give people as many different choices as possible for how to deploy our technology. Uh, one of the things that recently happened, for example, at the Microsoft Worldwide Partner Conference, is they were de uh, demonstrating the new Azure uh, web application store. And they were showing how to demonstrate, or how to deploy a web-enabled virtual machine in an Azure environment. The thing that they used to demonstrate that was a Barracuda web application firewall. And so we were one of the first companies into that space with our security products to help protect that virtual environment. You guys have a security heritage, obviously the firewall, going back to the original product. You mentioned Dean and the co-founders, Zach and those guys. Well, how does that play now into the cloud? Because it's really a tough thing. Pat mentioned security. Yep. You know, Steve Herod was saying on Friday, it's not about perimeter-based security, it's a whole new paradigm. Yep. Can you share your thoughts there? Yeah, it's really about how do we protect data where customers choose to deploy it. And I think the hybrid environment where some things are local, some things are hybrid, uh, one of the things that I do in a lot of my day-to-day -day job is talk to early stage companies that are maybe looking to be acquired or maybe looking for investment. And more and more what I see with those companies is there is no local infrastructure. Uh, when we acquired SignNow about a year ago, part of our standard diligence process is tell me about your local infrastructure. And their answer was we don't have any. Right, they were using all <laughs> cloud services. <laughs> and so when you look at that kind of environment, the way you can archive cloud to cloud, the way you need to back up data cloud to cloud, really changes. And that's, that's really where we're focused for the next wave of innovation. So I was getting some text there and some stuff on Twitter, I got to ask you from the crowd on the crowd chat. Go to crowdchat.net slash VMworld. Be part of the conversation on the hashtag VMworld. We got a whole dedicated crowd chat. It says, um, ask Rod how they harness the data protection paradigm and other solutions with third party non-Barracuda outside of the storage itself, like what Data Gravity is doing. Do you guys have that kind of solution? So our solution is fundamentally, we'll back up whatever infrastructure you have. So we'll use you know, agents to deploy for things like Microsoft Exchange, Microsoft SQL Server. We'll use operating system level uh, integration to, to deploy those. Like I mentioned, we'll plug into the cloud environments that people are using. So you know, our approach is to plug into whatever is commonly used in those mid-market environments. But you have no interoperability issues? No. Okay, cool. What's the coolest thing you've seen at VMworld? And we'll get you that uh, and give you a chance to answer that in the last question. What's the yeah. coolest thing you've seen so far? And what do you think will be the biggest splash of this show? What's the core theme that's going to come out of this? Yeah, well I've actually been here for about two hours and I actually haven't gotten to go into the show floor yet. So I would have to say that the Barracuda booth, which is at <laughs> slot number 2011, is uh, probably the coolest thing you're going to see. Sorry okay, for the so commercial, but I haven't a, been in that's there a, yet. That's a good barricade yeah. club, but let's ask more of an yeah. industry question. What do you think is going to come out of VMworld? If you had to throw the prediction out there, what's the core theme that's going to be the front page of the Wall Street Journal and the front page of the trade magazines? Yeah, I, think, uh, I think VMware expanding their footprint to include other types of infrastructure. I was really interested th this morning um, in some of the things like Docker that they're talking about from a containerization perspective, where it doesn't have to be a VMware virtual image. It could also be a container uh, using different technologies. So I think that kind of ongoing, you know, more heterogeneous approach that VMware's taking uh, makes a lot of sense. And I wouldn't expect anything less from Pat Gelsinger knowing yeah. uh, kind of how he operates from my days at EMC. He's very much about enabling the ecosystem and enabling the, the platform. Rod, thanks for coming to Rod Mathis, GM of Barracuda Storage Group here in uh, VMworld Live. Pat Gelsinger will be on at 4.3. We're going to ask him those questions. Always great to have Pat, as well as a lot of other great entrepreneurs, experts, and uh, executives. Here live in San Francisco, this is theCUBE for three days, wall-to-wall -wall coverage. We'll be right back. <laughs>